The Canadian Card Collector here, and welcome back to day 200 of your daily deck review. And yes, you heard me right, we've made it to day 200 of your daily deck review. And I am pretty excited and in disbelief that it's been day 200. So, the deck that we're taking a look at today is a pretty exciting and interesting one. So, with no further ado, we're taking a look at the Orbit Black Hole Edition playing cards. So, with no further ado, let's take a look. And see what we get. Here we have the Orbit Black Hole playing card, still fully sealed and brand new. So we'll find the little pull tab if they have one. And it's right here on the back. So we'll just take the cellophane right off. If it wants to come off in one piece. So here, here we have the Black Hole Edition. Orbit playing cards from Orbit playing cards in the standard glossy finish tuck box. And you got like that kind of like black hole kind of like space theme for the tuck box. And that's just like the whole like theme of the tuck box. On the bottom you got the little Orbit logo, the little circle logo there with the little rocket ship. Then on the back you got a little sneak peek of that back design. On the top, you've got that classic 23. And I guess the big elephant in the room, you might notice something. You can see right through it. You can see my hand right through the deck. And that, that's the whole kind of like gimmick or something, of whatever it's called, like the big main event of the deck. So, let's just pop the seal open. On the inner tuck flap, you got just more of that space kind of theme. And then on the inner tuck flap, it is more of that space. And on the inner tuck flap, it says Orbit Black Hole V1. So it says version 1. So there possibly could be more of these in the future. I have no idea. But it says version 1. So we'll take the cards out of the box. And they are wrapped in cellophane themselves. And on the inside, at the bottom, it says We Are Orbit. And then you got a black, kind of like just colorway on the inside. Instead of like the standard white, it is like a different color there in that black color. And you got a little bit of information there on the well, tuck bend. It says contact by Joe something. I'm not going to uh, butcher that. And then designed by Daniel Schneider. And then the Orbit website there. And then you got the hole right through because I can like, my finger goes right through the tuck box. Which you don't see too many like decks like this, which is unique. So now that we took a look at the tuck box, come take a look at the cards. And first we gotta crack open this or take the cellophane off the cards. And I don't think there's a pull tab on these ones, so I just gotta like find a little bit like spot here. Try to rip this open. Might take a minute, these are well well packaged. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Uh, I don't think these are made by the United States Planker Company because the United States Planker Company does not wrap their cards. They're either made by Taiwan or that other one, the one in China. I always forget. I'm terrible at expert playing cards or something. I, I always forget. I always forget what kind of what the companies are called. Even though I talk about and handle playing cards every day, I always forget. But here we have the back design with the standard white border, and it is definitely not a one-way back design because the way that the black hole goes. So it's a one-way back design. I mean, it's definitely not a mirror back design. It's a one-way back design. You got that kind of space. Black hole theme once again. With like the black background, you got the stars, and then you got like the purplish, bluish, or orangey pink kind of color for the black hole. And then once again, you got the hole straight through the cards, where I can just like put my fingers around it and stuff. And then you got that kind of like different kind of like stock and finish there. Now for the cards you get with the deck. You get the first Joker here, 
which is kind of like the classic Orbit J Joker, but in like a twist, because like it's a black hole edition. So it's kind of like all the cards are getting sucked through the black hole. As you can see, it's like a kind of like getting sucked through there, and it's all warped. All the images are warped. And the cards might be a little bit more flimsy just because they have a big hole through it. And then you got a second identical Joker there. And then for the rest of the cards, they're going to have a certain, there's, there's like a certain theme where all of them are going to be like warped, a kind of warped kind of look to it. And then oh, there's the custom Ace of Spades where it's like that warped. And then you got the Fontaine, I'm mean, not Font, the Orbit. And you got the Orbit font there in the corners. Then all the cards are going to have that kind of warped style. So to it. And there's a classic like. Orbit style card, just with that kind of warped look to it. Which makes it fun and unique. And then you got the Jack, Queen, and King of Spades here. And they're pretty much like that kind of classic kind of Orbit style court card there. Just in like a blue and like black colorway. For as much as you can see, they kind of look, they look Pretty standard there, with like the top of the head you can see. And you got the diamonds here, the custom Ace of Diamonds. Not really custom, just the Ace of Diamonds there. With that bright red colorway. And then you just got the standard orbit diamonds there. And then you got the Jack, Queen, and King of Diamonds. And they still all have that kind of like spiral kind of like warped look to them and then the, the court cards are still the standard orbit court cards just in that blue and black colorway same thing with the clubs in that blue and black colorway and the standard kind of court card look and some of the faces as you know with the orbit decks have the custom like faces to them but it's kind of a little hard to see with this deck here and then you got the classic and the standard Orbit clubs. These cards are slightly hard to handle with the big cutout in the middle. And then you got the hearts. Jack, Queen, and King of Hearts. And that blue and black color once again. That's warped design. And the warped effect looks really cool on like the, the 10 and the 9s. They have more like lines to them. What do now for the last two cards in the deck, you get a double backer of the back design. And then you get an extra eight of clubs, eight of spades. But at this moment, it kind of looks like just like a four. Because of that like warped design. But now that we took a look at the cards, time to test the handling. And first we'll start with the springs. And this will be pretty interesting to see how they handle with that big cutout in the middle. So we'll start with the springs, if I can even spring them. Oh yeah, they definitely can spring, but they're definitely like really bendy. Now I would be really careful that they just don't like rip, because they could potentially rip, because they're like more like, like less space between the border and like the middle of the deck where the hole is. So they could rip a little bit, if you're not careful, but they do spring. They're definitely like extra bendy, like a lot of flex to it. And they're pretty smooth for the springs. I don't want to go too crazy with them. I don't want to ruin them right away. But the springs, they do spring and they feel pretty nice with the springs. Just like a more of a lighter and easy spring to it. Now for the fans, they still fan pretty normally. As you can see, you can see most of the pips and numbers. And they spread pretty evenly, not like super evenly or nothing. 
It was kind of weird to fan them with the big hole in the middle. But they still handle pretty good. There's not really any clumping or stickiness to the cards. They're still pretty relatively smooth. Sorry, I just blanked out. My mind just went blank for a second there. Oh yeah, time for the Pharaoh. And then a nice smooth Pharaoh there. And they interlock and wave almost flawlessly there. Just some of the cards are misaligned. Now time for a giant fan of the back design. And then, okay. Yeah, when you riffle these, some of the cards kind of get stuck together. And we'll find that out when we actually get there. Now, time for the reverse pharaoh. And they do not want a reverse pharaoh at all. But I definitely have to push them and slide them together to get them to interlock and wave. But they interlock and wave, okay. Now time for a giant fan of the faces. Now for the Wiffle Shuffle or Bridge Shuffle. And I just realized something that these might be near impossible. Wiffle shuffle or bridge shuffle. Well, like you still can do it, but usually where I put my fingers to like riffle these is right in the middle of the deck, but there's a giant hole in the middle, so it's kind of awkward and weird to riffle these. But you can still get them to kind of work. Yeah, I'm just not gonna even try because I'm just gonna bend the cards all up. So you kind of can get a riffle to it, but it's kind of hard to do it, and you might like ruin the cards a little bit more if you do that. So I'm just not going to do riffle, so I'm just going to say they can't really riffle or bridge shuffle, but they still can slightly. Now try for the packet cuts, and this is probably what they're meant for, mostly is this cardistry. Now for the one handed cut or surely a cut. And it's hard to one hand cut these because I usually have to put my finger right in the middle. So any tricks that you have to do with putting your finger like on the middle of the deck is not gonna work really well. But I'm trying my best. No, I just I can't even pack it. One hand and cut these, so surely I cut them. So let's go straight on to the dribble. The dribbles feel pretty smooth. It's more of a lighter dribble because they're like a thinner card. So they got more flex and bend to them. But they still dribble. At least that's one thing they can do. Still dribble. Now for the spread fan.
And lastly, spread the curds on the table. Well, I gotta say, it's definitely my most unique deck that I have in my collection. Like, one of my more unique decks. And I like Orbit for experimenting with their cards. Always coming up with these new and exciting ideas. Because you never really see, like, too many decks that have holes in them. The only other deck that I know that really has a holes in it is, like, that one deck from anyone, anyone worldwide. That deck has a bunch of holes in it. But this is the only one that I have in my collection that's like this. So overall, the you like the design of the deck is pretty unique. I like the back design with that like kind of like black holes space kind of background theme. Unique back design. And I really like the faces, how they have that kind of warped design to it. And like the nines. The tents and like the face cards look the coolest. They have more like lines to it. You see that more warped effect. It doesn't really work if you have like a three. I guess the threes work. And the twos kind of work. But if you have like a like an ace. An ace just looks like a big hole straight through the card. Nothing too exciting with the aces. But overall the design of the deck is fantastic. And for the handling. Like they, they, they do handle. It's mostly better for they but packet cuts are like the best thing they can do with this deck. You can do like you can still packet cut these pretty well. And then for everything else, like the fans still fan pretty good. And you can like still spring them in stuff. It's not like as easy. So some things are gonna be a little bit harder to do with these cards. But that's probably not what they're meant for. They're mostly meant for like cardistry. More yeah, they're more geared towards cardistry. So they don't really handle the best. Like the quality of the cards is still fantastic, but it's just but with the big hole in the middle, they're more like thinner and more flexible. So it's kinda of harder to. You can't really do some of the moves because they require your finger to be in the middle of the deck. Like push down on the middle of the deck, but there is no middle of the deck. So your fingers just go through it. So it's harder in that aspect to do some some of the moves, but you can still handle them a little bit. And they're just more of like a unique deck to have in your collection. So if you're a collector, and this is a, definitely a deck you should have in your collection because it's unique with its design and the hole through the middle. And if you're for in, and if you're you know, for cardistry, like if you like to do cardistry, then this is a unique deck. To experiment with but with that being said i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for being here for 200 of your daily deck reviews and i'm this has been the orbit black hole playing cards from orbit and i'm the canadian card collector signing out that's the video thanks for watching see you next time bye